All right, we're ready to begin. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sam. Uh, we're going to call to order the Clark County Veterans Advisory Board this Thursday afternoon, September 9th, 2021, at uh, 1400 hours. So uh, let's let's do the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Uh, the flag of our country being in this place of honor, right hand salute. Join me in uh, pledging allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. And um, Bruce has kindly volunteered to do the invocation, but um, Bruce, before you begin, let's, um, let's acknowledge that, that Sam in an email sent out that um, there was Greg and Carla Joe Whitson lost a son, and so as you're as you're going about your invocation, please keep that uh, those parents in your thoughts and prayers. So Bruce, if you would uh, please lead us in the invocation. All right, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, join me in a moment of uh, just a moment, please, here, uh, fellow comrades. Uh, dear God, thank you for allowing us to attend our meeting today as we do our deliberations and go within the business of our meeting today. Let us also remember and reflect that we have had recent family members and other veterans that may be subject to the COVID that has been going on for the past couple of weeks and that we ask you to uh, guide us in our deliberations. And in God's name, we say, amen. Uh, fellow comrades, I want to just take a moment of reflection and we'll have more of a discussion about this during the course of our meeting. But we will be need to be reflecting on the 20 years of 9 11. As many of us know, that that was one of our darkest days in American history. And we will be celebrating that, uh, on that event coming up this weekend with events around. So please remember our fellow comrades, our citizens, and everyone who perished in 9 11 those 20 years ago. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Yes, thank you, Bruce. So, um, at this time, Bruce, could you please give us a roll call of board members by organizations? Yes, Mr. Vice Chair, I'm going to do that now. All right, roll call of the of the organizations. 48, primary, Morris Giesler. Steve Sledgers. Here. American Legion Post 14, Gene Contour. Fortin. He's not here. No alternate. American Legion Post 44, Daryl Wirtz. John Rose. American Legion Post 168, Amboy. No representation. American Legion Post 176, Michael Gibson. Here. Les Schweiber. American Veterans Post 6, uh, John Lovejoy. Here. Vanis Pratt. Uh, excused. Okay, excused. DAV Chapter 4, Board Secretary Bruce Moss here. Alternate Tom Kuzeron. Korean War Veterans Association, no representation. Marine Corps League 826, Steve Sledgers. Here. John Stoffel. VFW Post uh, 4278, Shannon Roberts. Excused. Dana Difford. Don't hear anybody. All right, VFW Post 7824, Board Vice Chair Michael Harding. Here. VFW Post 12028, David Daly. Vietnam Veterans 512, Greg Witsit. Here. Nick Herber. Members at large, Board Care Chelly Jones is excused. Jim Jensen. Here. Michael Langsdorf. Kevin Lawson. Here. Brian McGillis. Excused. Tanya Wark. Present. Clark County Representative Samantha Whitley. Here. Clark County Veterans Assistance Center Representatives Judy Russell. Sharon Tyre. Here. Is there anybody else who is joining us today for our meeting? Please state your name and your organization that you're a part of. I'm. Uh, my name is Thomas Breitbach. I'm with the Clark County uh, Community Services, and I'm just here to um, as uh, to observe. Okay. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. I'm Andy Lexo, 
with uh, Lifeline Connections Veterans Engagement Specialist just here to check it out. Okay, thank you, Andy. Is there anybody else who has joined us for a board meeting today? Last call. Hey, Close 14. Okay, 14's here. Anybody else? Terry hey, Green, Colin Simeon Tribe, Tribal Veteran Rep. Oh, okay. Thank you, Terry, for joining us again. Absolutely. Uh, looks like that's all we've got for our uh, our board members and guests today, Mr. Vice Chair. I didn't right, get well, to do thank my, you, Bruce, and, and everyone that that's joining us today. Um, we are coming up on a, a very very dark day, one of the darkest day in our nation's history, and so uh, here to talk about it from CMAC is uh, Mike Burton. Mike, are you with us? I haven't seen Mike join in yet, but uh, um, we could approve the minutes. And then Jamie Spinelli was trying to introduce herself. I saw you, Jamie. I'm yeah, my sorry. apologies. <laughs> um, and we could uh, move forward with her presentation. And yeah, and I see you too, Mel. Thank you. All right, so uh, Jamie. Uh, so do Jamie, we do we want to approve? Uh, the I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, Sorry. Yes, yes. We need a motion to approve the minutes, please. I'm trying to trying to hurry up and get done so I can get off the stage. So moved. Second. Second. All right. So who made the motion to approve, please? Steve. All right. Thank you, Steve. You bet, Mike. All right. So the uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? The uh, motion is carried without dissent. Um, now, um, I believe it's okay to, to move on. Uh, Mike Burton, are you there? Who? Mike Burton. Mike Burton from CMAC. Okay. He must not be uh, online just yet. So, Jamie, are you ready to uh, to talk about veteran homelessness? Sure. Could you please? Yes. So thank you for joining us. For having me. Uh, can everybody hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, my name is Jamie Spinelli, and I'm the homeless response coordinator for the city of Vancouver. Uh, I've been doing this job just since February of this year for the city. Um, but my uh, my experience and my background is um, is doing homeless outreach uh, here in Vancouver and Clark County for the last I don't know eleven years. Um, so I don't um, I, I certainly don't want to um, <clears throat> pretend as if I'm the uh, expert on veterans or veteran homelessness because I certainly am not. Um, and so what I was hoping to present today, although if you, anyone has questions about veteran homelessness specifically, I'd be happy to attempt to answer them. Um, but what I was hoping to present today is actually uh, something that the, the city is working on in regards to homelessness, which will be available to veterans, of course, um, is kind of a plan that we're attempting to move forward that includes some sanctioned campsites, amongst many other things. Um, so back in May, I presented a plan to the council um, specifically in an effort to address unsheltered homelessness, um, which includes setting up some sanctioned and managed campsites, some additional safe park sites. The city is already operating one safe park site um, out at 138th and, and 18th. That's, that's been quite successful. So, I mean, I could fill another safe park tomorrow with all the RVs I'm sure that everyone's seen outside. Um, so hopefully we'll be opening some uh, some additional places that people will be able to um, legally camp and park 24 seven um, without uh, being hassled to, to move around or tear down camp or things like that. Um, there are a few other things that was presented in that plan that includes um, working with Columbia River on the creation of kind of a street medicine team that will include uh, um, it's, it's basically like a proactive outreach team um, that focuses on health care. So mental health, um, substance use disorder, there will be a peer, um, somebody that can uh, address minor medical needs, um, and then they'll have access to a prescriber. 
um, those that team is intending to uh, not be a crisis team. We've got crisis teams here, which are fantastic. Um, but what we have outside are lots of folks who don't um, who often don't leave their camps to to access health care um, of any kind. Uh, and a lot that are in need. So these folks will go out and just proactively engage people who are living outside um, around their healthcare needs. So treatment will be able to be provided like right there at somebody's camp. Minor medical um, care will be provided right there at somebody's camp. Um, in addition to that team, I don't know, has anyone here heard of the Talk and Trash program that we fund and share operates? So uh, several years ago now, uh, the city partnered with SHARE to create a program which they have called Talk and Trash. Um, and it's basically a litter, a litter cleanup crew, um, but they, it consists of um, a crew chief and then the rest of the crew are folks who either currently or have previously experienced homelessness. Um, so basically it's like a low, imp a low barrier employment opportunity for folks who um, who need some income um, and then it kind of pulls double duty by cleaning up litter all over the city um, and that litter is not exclusive to um, homeless camps it's literally anywhere you know there's people dump their trash everywhere um, so they go around kind of on a route and pick up I, I think at last count they're averaging about 20 tons per month of solid waste that they're picking up and dumping um, because the, the crew um, consists of folks who uh, have, have experiences with homelessness. Um, I thought what a great opportunity to both provide some additional training to those folks, but also um, some additional engagement to the folks who are living in camps where they do go pick up litter. Um, so we're, we're hoping to provide them with some training as well as some additional funding for a second crew. <clears throat> so that while they're out and about picking up litter, they can have much more you know, kind of focused and intentional engagements with uh, with people who are living outside, um, kind of sharing their story and how how they got to um, got connected with that employment opportunity and how maybe some of them have exited homelessness. Uh, and and part of the reason for that is that <clears throat> research shows that it takes a minimum of seventeen positive contacts for someone who's experienced chronic homelessness to start to engage in services. And so so the idea is that. Um, we kind of increase the number of the, the number of contacts that people are having um, and how frequently those are occurring to really kind of speed up the process of people attempting to engage in services. So we'll get more trash cleaned up, provide more low barrier employment, and then have some additional skills for, for the crew there. Um, <clears throat> and then we intend to, uh, at the beginning of COVID, um, the city began placing what we call sanitation sites near different encampments, large encampments in town. Uh, those consist of porta potties, hand washing stations, and dumpsters. Um, and that was really just uh, initially an effort to prevent the spread of COVID. Um, but it's something that I, I believe in, I think the council now agrees we should continue even, even post COVID should we reach a post COVID time um, because it reduces, uh, it reduces, you know, health, health issues, just basic health and sanitation issues. Um, and if people don't have a place to use the restroom, they're going to do it. They're going to do it wherever they can. Um, so, in it, so we have increased in the last few months, um, the number of sanitation sites that we have around the city and we'll continue to leave those post COVID, uh, and then increase those as needed if needed uh, in different locations. So we've done that. I think. I think we've got seven sanitation sites right now, um, and that will be addressed as needed. Um, I'm trying to think what else. What else is, is there? A map oh, of these things anywhere? Sorry, go ahead. Is there a map of these things anywhere? A list? I don't have a map, but I think we have a list of them on the city's website. But I'd be happy to um, to share that information. I mean, I can tell you off the top of my head. There's one outside. Well, it's not outside share house. It's on the corner of 12th and King. Um, we've got one at the camp that's at 51st circle. We've got one over on um, the, the burnt bridge kind of trail entry off of 65th and 18th. Um, 
There's one over on 107th. It's kind of near Coxley off of 112th. There's one over there. Um, Turtle Turtle Place downtown. We've got one there. What was the last one? Turtle Place, where the bus stop is, kind of oh, yeah. made downtown. Jamie, um, could you please uh, get that get that list of those sites to to Sam? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Then, then Sam would be able to uh, distribute it out to the to the members and people on the email list. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if anybody here ever um, comes across a place, a large encampment, or in, that's not currently being serviced that would benefit from it, please feel free to um, to pass that information along because we want people to have the things that they need. Um, but the hope is that we're, we're reducing the number of large encampments outside by creating those kind of sanctioned and managed campsites um, for people to move into. So it's, I mean, it's just, it's gonna be, I think, healthier for everybody as they're continuing to work on housing or whatever, whatever other services that they need. Um, and I think the other piece of the proposal that I made back in, in May was just the, so prior to COVID, um, we were working in conjunction with other other partners on the creation of a community court program, very similar to veterans court, mental health court, um, but specifically for those who are experiencing homelessness. Um, all those plans were halted because of COVID and the location that they were gonna have the community court proceedings was the navigation center. Um, and with the navigation center closed, we need to find another location to do that. But um, the legal department has um, I said that they're going to be resume um, the discussions around the community court program. Um, so that'll be a way for people to reduce barriers that they currently have to housing and employment, um, but also kind of put them on a path to engagement um, in potentially needed services. Um, so I get that's in a nutshell for what we're working on. The next steps for um, the sanctioned campsites are um, next Monday, if any, should anybody care to do so, we're presenting <clears throat> um, we're doing a first reading of the amending of the um, at Monday's city council meeting. So in order to allow these campsites to, um, to exist, we have to amend our current camping ordinance uh, because our current camping laws like allow for 14 days of camping with a permit. Um, and so in order to have them 365, we've got to change that, um, but the camping ordinance is actually going to do a couple of other things. Um, we are kind of carving out some sensitive environmental areas where it will no longer be legal to camp at all ever. Um, so we're, we're mostly just putting buffers around like our waterways and, and those sensitive areas. Um, but then we're also adding a nighttime exemption. Um, because we also know that we have folks living outside who work a night shift or a swing shift and with the current ordinance, they're basically not allowed to sleep because sleeping is only allowed at nighttime or camping is only allowed at nighttime. Um, so we're going to be creating an exemption for nighttime workers so that they can set up um, to sleep during the day. Should that be something that they need? Um, so first reading of that ordin ordinance happens Monday night at the council meeting. Um, and then. I think in two weeks, a week or two weeks after that, um, then it's put on the agenda again for public comment, which of course any of you are welcome to do that as well. Uh, and then I think within 30 days, it becomes an ordinance and then we start to open up campsites, hopefully, because we're also working on the contract for providers um, to manage these campsites right now. I feel like that was a whole lot in a short period of time because I wasn't sure how much time I had to speak. But if anybody has um, has any questions, I suppose I could um, I could answer those. I can tell you that my my work with veteran homelessness currently, um, in addition to all that plan that I just explained, I also lead the city's heart team stands for homelessness assistance and resource team. Right now that that team consists of myself and officer Chavers. Um, but we are slowly adding to that some additional outreach. Um, and that truly is almost like the, uh, the city's own kind of homelessness team, um, outreach team. Uh, so Tyler and I, in addition to all the other stuff we do, go out and consistently do outreach to folks in encampments. And we also participate in a lot of those coordinating meetings, including the Veterans by Nameless meeting. Um, so we, we're, we're pretty plugged in with veteran services as, and, and try to attempt to, to locate and uh, connect with veterans who are experiencing homelessness here in Vancouver. So.
So with that, I'll see if anybody has any questions. <laughs> Thank you. This is uh, the, the the idea of putting up supervised camps is a for me a great idea. So I appreciate that. Not everyone does. So. <laughs> well, what's the alternative? Right, that's a great question. That's what I ask. <laughs> Unsupervised buses. Right. Um, and so, Jamie, you said the safe park site is at 138th and 18th? That's the current safe park site, and we're looking to add to that, but we don't yet have a location. Okay, and what was the name of the, the group of individuals that go out and go to the large encampments and provide services? Are you talking about the sanitation sites? Or are you no, talking nothing. about the trash pickup? No, no, you said something else. Oh, the street uh, medicine team. So there's yep. not a name for that yet. It's actually still in, in development, but it's Columbia River Mental Health is who's going to be implementing that team. Okay. I think they're they're just now started like posting for hiring maybe or sometime in the next couple of weeks. Um, and they're looking to have people hired and beginning around October, November. And so if we see someone, a homeless person, veteran or not, it doesn't matter. But if we see them in need of services, is there a person that we can contact? Is there a hotline so we can get that, that person assistance immediately or is it through a process? No, there, um, there are two app options actually, and I'm probably gonna have to get the phone numbers um, to Sam to have her pass that out. Um, the two options are one, uh, Council for the Homeless, the county just funded and Council for the Homeless hired someone um, as a coordinated outreach, uh, I, I don't know, outreach coordinator or something like that. Anyway, their their job is to is literally to coordinate all the agency outreach efforts. Um, that way, everybody is kind of not just off doing their own thing, you know, kind of sporadically. Um, his name's Cody Shaw. He's on vacation today, but um, he would be an option and I can get Sam his, his contact information. And then I know that Outsiders Inn also, Outsiders Inn currently operates the, the men's shelter at St. Paul's. Um, they set up a hotline and that phone number is actually gonna be going into the new pocket guides um, as the coordinated outreach number. That number used to go to me because I, I did that previously. Um, and now Adam Kravitz and his group will have that coordinated outreach line. Um, I don't have that number, on the phone, but I can give it to Sam to have her pass that out. What's great about that is that these new outreach teams um, are now doing uh, some weekend and evening coverage for the first time in Clark County ever, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, that, that's all I have. Anyone else have any questions for Jamie? I would say that uh, the exchange and uh, CMAR, and I do a lot of outreach too. I do this uh, Andy with Lexo with Lifeline. I do uh, veterans outreach. <clears throat> and I ju was just out this afternoon <clears throat> with uh, Living Hope Church. They delivered up, I, I bet we delivered a couple thousand pounds of food today to all, a bunch of, I think we went to five or six homeless camps today. So, those are some other people doing outreach. There's tons of outreach happening. I mean, there really always kind of has been a lot of outreach happening, both agency as well as grassroots. Um, back when I was doing outreach, um, I worked for Community Services Northwest for um, for several years. But then I also helped run a nonprofit on the side that was non-paid work. We we opened up the the shower trailer that that runs over at Living Hope Church um, and did regular like weekend nighttime street outreach. So there is a lot of outreach happening. Um, which is why we initially created the, the original coordinated outreach line so that just in one place, somebody could have one phone number to call instead of trying to find, you know, which outreach worker does what. Because um, that can be some people only do food, some people do needle exchange, you know. Um, but I think with either of the numbers that I'll be giving to Sam, you, those people should be able to either address the issue that you might have or figure out very quickly who you should contact or who they should contact. Well, thank you. Thank you for all that information and thank you for all that you do. Um, uh, 
Last call for any questions or comments for Jamie. Alrighty, Jamie. Well, thank you so much, and I uh, gre greatly appreciate all your efforts that you're doing for members of our community. And uh, you are definitely an angel. So thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you all for having me. Yep. Thank you, uh, Mike Burton, sir. I see you. How are you? I'm fine. I'm sorry. I apologize for being late. I was on a Zoom meeting before this one, and I realized I had to turn off my Zoom before I could open up this system. <laughs> so but we're learning yeah, something we're all the time. Yeah, I appreciate some time on this. Uh, I was asked to uh, uh, talk a little bit about the program that the, every year for the last four or five years, the city of Portland has asked the Community Military Appreciation Committee to uh, stage a 9-11 uh, uh, Remembrance uh, commemorative uh, program. This year, as I'm sure you all know, is the 20th anniversary, and I would bet that if you asked yourself uh, where you were on that day at that time, you'll remember. Uh, but it's a lot of people uh, who, who perhaps don't, uh, a lot of young people, anybody uh, younger than uh, 10 or so may not remember where they uh, where they were on that day. So that's part of the reason for us having this program. It is to commemorate to some uh, close to 3,000 people who were who were killed on that day, uh, civilians, first responders, military, uh, and to uh, recall the heroism and the uh, bravery of the people who ran towards the fire, towards the smoke, mm -hmm. and helped out with that. Uh, Sam has posted up there. I hope everybody can see the program. Uh, we just got word this morning uh, that the uh, 149th uh, Attack Fighter Wing will have a flyover of F-15s to open the program right at 9 o'clock. So you might want to pass on to any constituencies that they'll hear a big thunder out there. Uh, this will be on the Vancouver waterfront, so uh, they'll be hopefully, if our timing is all working right, right at 9 o'clock, they'll open up the program. And then after that, we have a number of activities uh including uh, the 204th army band will be there at least from some of it uh there's some COVID issues there with them but they, we hope we'll have a, a, a good showing from that the uh, vancouver fire department honor guard uh, will be there we have student uh, from clark college will sing the national anthem we have the remembrances um then the presentation of the wreath and the final alarm which is the one that the fire department does uh the PT-658, uh, which is about the last operating uh, PT boat, it's certainly in this part of the, of the world, uh, will be out uh, on the river. Uh, and there'll be uh, 50 doves from the uh, uh, Jada uh, Remembrance uh, uh, release doves. They'll be, Jada Ward is going to release them from the Bright Dove uh, uh, release from the boat. It's, they're actually not doves, they're, they're pigeons, but that they're white. Yeah. <laughs> and they're homing pigeons, they always seem to get back. So there's there's some there'll be some fireboats out there. Uh, we have quite a quite a demonstration to show our respect for the people who ran towards that. One of the displays that'll be there, uh, be a fire truck, and up near that, there's two flags. One of the flags, a special one, has the names of everybody who was killed on that day and, and, and embroidered on it. And then the another one that shows all the first responders who lost their lives uh, in that event, the heroes flag. So it's a sad remembrance, but uh, they'll be there on, on display uh, up where uh, I'll be putting the, uh, the wreath in commemoration. Uh, it says outdoors. It's supposed to be a pretty nice day. Uh, we're <laughs> not requiring, but we're certainly encouraging uh, everybody to wear masks, regardless of what the situation is, and to keep uh, the social distance. Um, that would be very helpful. So starts off with the planes at uh, 0930, uh, 0900 and, uh, and should be over with uh, within about two hours, the whole program. So we'd like you to invite all your groups yourselves uh, to attend. Parking is a little tight down there. So there is on the program, I don't know if you can show that uh, or make it available, uh, Sam, but there's a, there's a, uh, CTRAN is providing a bus shuttle uh, from one of the parking lots there uh, because parking down in that waterfront area is is limited uh, or you have to pay for it. So, but there is a shuttle being provided that'll go up to one of the high schools and, and bring people down. Uh, 
and I'd be glad to answer any questions. But the thing is, I'd like to invite you all to come down that day and uh, participate. Well, uh, Mike, I just want to say thank you and please express uh, to Larry our sincere thanks for all that you guys are doing as an organization to put this together. It's, it's very, very heartfelt. And I think I can speak for every member of the of the advisory board that that we owe you to a great deal of uh, gratitude for putting this together. Um, it's, it's just it's hard to believe that it's going getting up on 20 years and it's it's just heart wrenching and it's bringing back old scars and and so um, I'm sure it's difficult for for you to the the head of the CMAC, but. Um, I, I'd like to sincerely thank you. Thank you both for, for what you're doing. Um, we'll open this up for questions for Mike. Anyone have any questions? There's more thanks. Uh, well, Michael, thank you. Let me let me just say this. Uh, CMAC course is made up of anybody who wants to join. Uh, and it's not a military uh, organization. It's a community organization. And so people like Sam, who's there to help us out and makes our liaison with you guys, is a very important link with that and the uh, community military advice uh, community uh, center resource center. Uh, but also, this particular program was put together by uh, uh, mainly by Marlene Varga, who is a uh, a, uh, a uh, army retired army nurse. Uh, she did. I don't, she's in it. She's like a whirlwind, and so she managed to rope all of us into the various aspects of this and did a uh, did a legend remain of the work. Uh, and the city of, of Vancouver and Clark County have been very, very cooperative. It, it's, a, it's a joy to do these events in this city, in this area, because of the support that uh, the military gets. Uh, and this isn't just a military thing, it's, it's first responders. But I think the, uh, the community respects and, and honors its first responders and its military. And uh, we're happy to uh, try to facilitate that response and, and appreciation of them. And we get a lot of uh, internal volunteers and fundraising we have to do some fundraising we don't really do fundraising we just have uh sponsorships from and i think those are on the program too but companies uh in this case down at the waterfront uh the developers and everybody else are chipping in on this one and so uh we i know larry and i both appreciate all the help we get from you guys and from everybody else in the community thank you thank you mike the full program and the shuttle schedule I, um, to everybody again this afternoon. So make sure everybody has that. Thank you. That'd be great. Thank you, Sam. Okay, I'll leave you. I've got another Zoom meeting. So I'll leave you now. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Mike. You take care. God bless. Bye -bye. Thank you. All right. Um, now it looks like it's time for our committee report. Uh, so, Mike Gibson, are you available, sir? Uh, yes, I'm here. There were no appeals for last month. Okay. All right. Um, thank you so much. And uh, it looks like there were also no updates from the policy and procedures. Is that correct, Tanya? Yes, it is. All right. So, do you have anything to add? Not at this. Not at this time. No. All right. Well, thank you so much, and thank you both for Mike and uh, Tanya for the work that you do. Uh, let's move on to the July 2021 contractor and fund reports with our fabulous Samantha. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Um, the summary of the reports is on the screen. I sent out the detailed reports uh, by email. So in July, the Veterans Assistance Center served 36 veterans with the Veterans Assistance Fund for a total of $55,346. They did have to deny one person. Uh, they help, there's a total of nine veterans that have been helped um, getting out of homelessness that's year to date. So the total for that is 9,387 since January. In July, they served 56 men and 10 women veterans at the center. They had a total of 224 veteran visits. Uh, and that includes 194 meals served. And then they received uh, over 1,190 phone calls and emails throughout the month. And they have 718 volunteer hours in July. That totals um, $17,727 in volunteer help. 
The free clinic dental program did not have any veterans referred in July. So if you know anybody that needs dental work, make sure we get them referred to get this assistance. Um, so there was no service provided, but they did still have program costs that were billed um, of $691. And then finally, our fund balance at the end of July was $902,700. Um, that includes revenue of 5614 and expenses of 51865 Do you have any questions? What's the criteria for sending someone for dental work? Yeah, they do have to be um, of modest means, and then they just contact the Veterans Assistance Center, and um, those, they can get them... Um, They'll do the qualifications and talk to them about getting it scheduled. And then I believe the free clinic reaches out to schedule when they have availability, which they usually they have at least um, availability for 2 clinics per month. And just depends on what will work for the veteran. Um, when they can get when they can get in. Fantastic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, um, this is. not this is probably not a question for you, Sam, but more for uh, Judy and or Sharon. But why was the one veteran denied uh, services? Or, or, you know, is at the top it says 36 veterans served and uh, one denial. Any ideas why that one veteran was denied? Yeah, I know it's definitely on the report. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but it's usually because they're over income or don't have. Um, haven't lived here for a year or something like that. Okay. Um, because if um, if they meet all the eligibility but are denied, then they can usually appeal that. So since it wasn't appealed, I'm thinking maybe they weren't eligible. Okay. Alrighty. Well, thank you so much. Anything else, Sam? That's all I have. Any questions for for Sam? Thank you as always. Yes, thank you, Sam. So, uh, the Veterans Assistance Center update, please. Hello, everyone, and hope everyone is doing well. Um, first, I'll just give you a, a quick update on the the one denial. It was because it was for a previous address. It was for utilities expense, and it wasn't the address they currently lived at. It was a bill for a current a previous address, and that doesn't fall under our policies and procedures. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it did. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so the Veterans Assistance Fund is uh, we're just plugging right along and. We're doing everything that we can do to assist what, who we can. We are getting ready for stand down, um, which is at the end of this month. And we've been, we actually have on the 12th of this month where a bunch of volunteers are meeting at our storage facility to fill bags, uh, the DOD bags. So that's going, um, that's scheduled. We've got plenty of volunteers for that. So I'm thankful that we've got people volunteering. Um, also, we're right in the middle of our auction, the 2021 auction, fall auction. Um, I put the auction website in the chat box, and I know Sam sent it out to everyone. So, uh, but it's it's right in the middle of, the, it ends on the 14th. So, if you guys are interested, please check it out. There's some good things on there. Any Seahawks fans, we've got a signed Russell Wilson football. So, you might want to check it out. Um, other than that, we're just, oh, and um, by the way, thank you to all the veteran service organizations. We have made the $2,000 mark for the donations for stand down for the Department of Labor grant. So thank you to all the um, organizations who donated. We really appreciate it. Um, that's about all I have unless y'all, oh yeah, we did. We received school supplies this year. Um, we went to the Vancouver Elks and picked up school supplies and we handed out school supplies to a little over 60 families. So I think we, um, that was a success. So we appreciate everyone who helped with that. Does anyone have any questions for me? Yeah, I tried to get on your auction site, but I, it made me. Or tried to make me download a program to do so. 
no you shouldn't have to do that it's just um you can just go to the actual website um if you were going to try and bid they might want you to download their website but if you're on the computer you shouldn't have to do that you should be able to go right to the website yeah, i had okay. problems getting on it too this is andy lexo again i had problems getting on that too i was going to look at stuff okay well um I'm not sure what the problem is. Um, most everyone that we've been sending out um, email blasts to everyone. So um, I would try, uh, maybe if you go to our website, um, the CCVAC website, and sorry, my phone is ringing. If you go to the CCVA, the C oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I can't turn it off. <laughs> okay. If you go to the CCVAC website, there is a link on our website, and that's ccvac.net. Well, I would say I, I didn't have any trouble with it when I went to the link, and I will send that out again this afternoon in case that helps anybody. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, uh, Sharon. Thank you. Uh, final quest, final call for questions for Sharon regarding the Veterans Assistance Center. I got, I got a question. Um, so I have this veteran I just met yesterday, seventy-one years old, been homeless a long time, Vietnam vet, no DD two fourteen. Can the Veterans Center help me out with that? Yeah, if you get me his name and his date of birth and his social security number. And you can call me with that on a secure line. Um, I can try to look it up in squares for you. Right on. Hey, thanks a lot, Sharon. You bet. You guys are the best down there, Sharon. You guys don't get the, oh. the recognition that you deserve. And um, all I can say is thank you so much for all that you do for our veterans in the community. Well, um, it's a labor of love for all of us, and we couldn't do it without the Veterans Advisory Board support. So thank you all. So thank you. Um, all right, well, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Um, moving on old business on my notes. It says, uh, 2021 Portland stand down. I have no information with that. So does anybody have anything? Well, I just put that as a reminder because it's happening, uh, this weekend and we had a little presentation about it last month. So I just wanted to put a note on there to remind folks that that is happening. Okay, now um, for our stand down, that's happening the 1st and 2nd of October, correct? Correct. Yeah. That's at the, uh, is it City View Church? No, Michael, it's at River uh, River City Church. River the City. Yeah. is 2400 East 4th Plain Boulevard, Vancouver 98661. It's right down the hill from the Vancouver VA and it's just past the Burgerville off of Fort Vancouver Way and Fourth Plain. Yeah, I just got the uh, the the, uh, the name of the church wrong, and um, it is just to the east of the Burgerville on Fourth Plain, um, over by the college. And uh, is that going to be uh, outdoors, indoors, drive-through? Do we know yet? It is a drive through event. It is outdoors, but we do have a big tent that will be put up um, with tables and chairs. We've got around 12 then, uh, providers signed up at the moment, and um, they will all be inside the tent six feet apart. Uh, the DOD bags will be handed out, out, out of the back of a U-Haul van. We have two passenger vans that will be going to different locations to make pickups and drop offs. We've got um, the dental van will be there. So MTI will be there, uh, which is a big, huge, great thing for them. So I'm, I'm super excited to have them there this year. We will have meals for everyone. Um, and it, it's coming right along. Okay. Already will Michael. thank you. Any questions about that while we'll have while we have uh Sharon with us? I believe Tanya had something. Okay, Tanya, please. It's not for it's not for Sharon. I don't remember if I said this last month at the meeting. 
but the Portland stand down has gone to um, a hybrid stand down. We're not going to be inside the Coliseum. Uh, they're going to be outside under the pagoda. They'll still be giving out um, the the clothing and stuff, the, the surplus that they normally do. And but they're just not going to have the providers. It's not going to be a job fair. It's much sized down. So I want to put that out. But it's still happening. And they're giving one hundred and fifty dollars to anybody who gets vaccinated there. Whoa. Yeah. Can we Multiple get vaccinated? I know, right? That's all. Hey, um, any additional old business? Hearing none, let's move on to new business. Does anyone have any new business for this board? Going once. Well, I, I, can I mention the, was that the thrive to, to survive is this Sunday? At our, you guys aware of that? It's at the River City Church, and uh, they're having teriyaki chicken and rice. It's put off by the uh, Recovery Cafe, and they're uh, they're having a mobile pet clinic, free haircuts, hygiene and backpacks, boots, socks, shoes, and housing assessments. Uh, that's this Sunday, and then a bunch of access to you know uh, community resources. I mean. You know, just notification. You know, people are going to be there. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, anyone else with new business? Open forum. Does anyone have any any other information they would like to share? Okay, well, um, I guess this is Sam. I um, wanted to let you guys know that as of November 1st, I'll be moving over to the city of Vancouver. I accepted a position with them. And so I will be here at your October meeting, hosting your October meeting. And um, I am sad to leave the veterans board, <laughs> but um, in October, so what we will do, we'll, have, we'll start getting our letters of intent for 2022. We'll approve all of the contracts that you want to fund in 2022. I'm, I'm anticipating that those will be extensions of everything that we're currently doing at this at the same levels. I'll work with the providers to see um, what their budgets are, and I'll present those to you for you to approve in October. And then I will try to draft all those contracts and have them out the door so that they're ready to start January 1st before I go. Um, and then the other thing, uh, Kelly cannot serve another year as the chair. So we will be looking for a chair um, for 2022 uh, and vice chair and a secretary treasurer. So um, we take nominations. The first uh, nominations will be taken in October. Then we'll take nominations again in November. And then in December, you will vote in your new officers. So please start thinking about who might want to volunteer for that awesome responsibility. And Michael, you've done an amazing job today, so that um, might just be uh, an idea for you. Well, Sam, um, I don't remember receiving a motion allowing you to leave. <laughs> um, I don't, I'm not sure if we as a body will allow you to leave us like that, but congratulations on, on your new position. And um, you. you're going to be, be a tough act to follow, so... Um, I pity the fool. I, I pity the person that has to try to follow your footsteps because, boy, that that's going to be uh, an impossible task for someone to complete. Well, it won't be impossible, and I actually I hope that they find a veteran that can replace me and serve this board. That would be even better. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, but uh, with regards to the. The motion to allow you to leave, I uh, vote no. <laughs> For the public record, please. Get out here. Uh, anyone else with anything for open forum? Yeah. Love you, Sam, and thanks for all the years that you've done this. Thank yeah. you. I agree. I agree. <laughs> yes, she will be missed. All right, well, um, well, real quick, 
um, keeping with the fine tradition that I have long established, I will be the long dissenting voice that we break up this meeting. But uh, that being said, uh, I'll take a motion that we adjourn for this meeting. Time to DD Mao. <laughs> Any seconds? I second it. No, I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those that's not, not named Michael Harding that's opposed, please say nay. All right, this this uh, meeting is adjourned. Our next meeting will be Thursday, October 14th. Everyone, please do me a favor and take care of yourselves and uh, consider joining the, uh, the commemoration of 9-11, the 20th anniversary. And um, other than that, you guys take care and we'll see you next month. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Bye. Mike. Thanks, Sam.